Blue Snowball. Okay. Okay, I have no idea what OBS was doing with the microphone there. I'm dreadfully sorry. Thanks uh, for making lots of noise about it. But here, uh, I was flying on Friday, so I wasn't drinking beer. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, of course. This is a Guinness uh, from a can. It's pretty decent. We... So what I wanted to go through and actually try to build like a lunar lander very much like the Apollo program. Because previously I've tried to build that and things have failed in so many ways, right? So yeah, we got to start. we got to start building this out. Now look, uh, oh yeah, okay, we... There we go. Let's build this thing. Now we're going to need to have... Uh, I mean, look, this is this is a, still a test to make sure things work. You know, one of the first things I probably should do is see if I can make a, a fully operating launch a bar system, right? So what we'll need is like a stack separator. We'll need uh, the special engine with the thingy. Right, so we'll do this, and then we'll actually bind this to action groups. So if we hit the abort, oh wait, there's the abort, right? If abort is hit, the things that will happen is this bottle rocket thing will enable. There, great. So, so that should work. And then after that enables, I should be able to pop this thing, and then there needs to be parachutes, so we need to have parachutes. So let's just, we're going to do this like NASA does it. We're going to test each stage and build up, right? Maybe asparagus staging, you know. Oh, I am, I am just, I'm being relaxed on Sunday night. That's really what is going on here. We're not being super fancy or anything, so we need to have... A pair of radial mount parachutes here on the sides. Nice. Uh, so let's... Oh, it's called Fly Safe Already. Let's save this as... Uh, Apollo... 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 Let's see what happens here. I think there will be many different DLCs. So now, where is the abort button? Because, yeah, wait, where is the abort? Is this abort? Yeah. Th there we go. <laughs> I like how this thing is still, like, playing the, the build-up to launch music, and I just hit the abort button. You got an interview at SpaceX, Charles. Congratulations. Uh, just some apologies with the live stream. It's actually very hard for me to keep up with the chat because there's a major lag. Okay, a bar system works. Let's revert to the vehicle assembly building and let's make it a bit better. Hey, mortal mostly. Mostly. Hey, Scott, you got me into KSB and taught me to love aerospace well over a decade ago. And now I'm an embedded software engineer working on aircraft nav equipment. Thanks for helping me get here. Thank you for uh, letting me know about these things. I have been learning all about aircraft navigation equipment, but I actually had a fascinating problem on um, on Friday. Yeah, where we ended up flying straight head on in towards someone because of uh, because th they weren't talking on the radio and they were not following the rules and yeah, many things. And they didn't show on ADS B because of reasons. Uh, it's actually quite complicated reasons. There we go. So now I'm going to modify this. I'm just going to shrink this thing down a bit. This is where I'm going to put my, uh, put my, like, a uh, what do you call it? The, the things, the thingies. That will be my engine there. And sitting on top of that, what we're going to do is put the monopropellant, because we only need a couple of tanks of that, right? So we've got like a service module thing. That's the idea here. There. So the monoprop will go up inside there. You see? Isn't that nice? Elegant? Beautiful, right? So before we do that, we're also going to need to have some uh, like batteries. We'll stick a couple of batteries in there to make sure we've got power. And 
I'll probably hang like a couple of solar panels off the side here as well. And then we're going to need our little uh, thrusters for docking. No, so wait, before we do that, we probably need to put a suitable engine on there. Now, I'd like to put that little engine on there because we don't need huge amounts of thrust for this. But if we put the next stage on after this, what you'll see is like a, the fairing size will be wrong, right? So if I, if I put like the next stage in like that, it'll do a fairing like that. So one way to fix this is to go in and put, you know, engine plates in. So the engine plate will create a fairing which is the correct size. So you just need to then modify this thing to be the right size. Come on. There we go. Modify this. Shrink my fairing down. There we go. Shrink, 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 shrink. Isn't that beautiful? Bryson Jameson, you crew, what color would a nuclear saltwater rocket exhaust be and would the Chernobyl... Um, the a nuclear saltwater rocket would definitely be blue. Zapdos Games is waiting for Interstellar Quest in the next five years or so. So I definitely would be interested in doing uh, Interstellar Quest 2 for sure. John Rehar, thank you very much for the super chat. Is KSP2 basically an alpha release? As someone who used to work for a large Redmond software company, bugs are to be expected. I'm waiting for the Mac route. You know, um, Redmond's pretty close to Seattle, isn't it? Where they make this. So, yeah. So that is the engine. So I need to figure out where the center of mass on this whole thing will be once it's launched. So, because that's where we want to put our rock, our little uh, thrusters, right? So here's these. You want to just mostly line them up so that when they're firing, they're moving through the center of mass. And obviously, I need to move them around one more notch. That's pretty good. The only thing is this center of mass, I guess, will move forwards over time. So I'll move them up just a bit. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need underneath this is going to be the... Uh, the fairing, the stage where we have the next bit. <laughs> right? So I need to put a shrouded vehicle in here. The only so the problem is I would like to have a two person lander, right? But this lander can is so fat. I don't think it's the way to go. Yes, we are live. Fish and fragmentation rockets when? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, here's the th well, with with fission fragment rockets, again, you have to ask, do you get enough specific impulse for your power? Um, okay, so let's, let's save this thing, and let's figure out, yep, save this. Save. So what I'm thinking, actually, is I build a... A sideways thing rather than doing a rotation and translation so there's there's a few options here uh, here no coupling here payloads ah here we go cargo bay so I can actually do like a side attached cargo bay that's large and and we might be able to use that instead and then you could put something in there see how that works beautifully and then when we open it up, the space lander can go in there. That's what I'm thinking of doing instead. We are the walrus. Thank you very much for all your super chats. It is, frankly, it's humbling. I'm just here having fun uh, and trying to you know, figure out how, at what point I should really start making proper Kerbal Space Program 2 videos. So anyway, uh, this is what I'm going to use for my lander. It's maybe a bit long but I think we'll be fine so underneath this we'll put like a, a large rocket engine section uh, yeah here we go and we'll give that something like the labradoodle there we go that's gonna look the part I wonder how much Delta V that segment gets it's probably gonna be plenty you knew you spelled a po so the reason I'm not doing uh, the site, I'm not doing an Apollo style attach is because I've had a lot of trouble with the collider 
for the two-person lander can. So I'm sort of doing the sideways attach, thinking that it might be slightly better. Uh, why why did I not never go full-time YouTuber? Because I have a family, and in the US, you need to have health insurance, and big companies have really good health insurance. Also, I really like coding. I'm drinking Guinness. After all, it is Irish weekend, also known as St. Patrick's Day weekend. Okay, so I'm trying to think the best way to build a lander now. We'll start with a, a decoupler down here. And I think I'm going to use the same little dinky engine for this. So maybe I should build this off to the side. I think I, we will see if this works. This may not work, but my plan is I'm going to build like the lander off to the side and then we'll put it inside the thing and hopefully it will magically work. So look, I'd really like to use this, but it's just not going to work. So I'm going to use this and and then I'm going to use like a little, uh, well I could use one of these instead. Or this. Hmm. So many options. Where do I work? Well, I just, <laughs> I, I work at a big fruity uh, company, right? I mean, you know, I work in machine learning and I do all sorts of stuff. You saw the blue... Well, you are you down in San Diego? Uh, is that where the Blue Angels and all that are? Uh, storage. Payloads. People! I mean, look, here's an idea. How about we make something that's big enough to be like a whole landscape? I said little? What do you mean I just said little? What are you talking about? Okay, and that's my wife saying that she ain't coming home, so you've got me for as long as you want. How about, here's an idea. How about I take this? I have a I have a plan here. A big fruity company, yes. Okay, I know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do a slightly different design here. Uh, okay. I uh, gotta gotta tell my wife what's going on. Uh, we're not doing this small. Yeah, that's right. So we'll do, attach on there, and we'll have like a little bit of a space for them to live. I don't want this here. Sorry, I, I'm like going through like a million different designs in my head. That upper stage engine, how does it compare with the Poodle? Um, I it's It's got roughly the same performance, just a slightly more thrust. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to actually calculate my delta V to make sure I have enough here for the landing and the takeoff. And I want to make it kind of cool. I, what I'm actually trying to do is figure out how to make this thing rotate 180 degrees. But you know what instead I'm going to do is... So this is medium. There, we're going to do this. So Yeah, we'll do that, right? So the, the engine will go in here. And attach this on the bottom. Now, I'm wondering if I make this the launch assembly tells us I have four kilometers per second of delta V, which is fantastic. That's way more than I need. But we have to work on this a little right now. Did they fix the fairings? They have a lot of things they need to fix still. I don't know what they've fixed. I've seen that there are notes telling us that they fixed this, that, and the next thing. Hey, Scott, a question for you about a different type of heart. This is Ian Smith with the Super Chat uh, asking... <laughs> What do you make of Toyota abandoning hydrogen vehicles in favor of EVs? Did you see a future in hydrogen? Listen, there was a future in hydrogen as long as the oil companies were supporting it, right? And the Bush and his buddies were definitely very interested in supporting it for a long time. But, yeah, it never sort of panned out. Uh, so we'll move this down. What I want to do is put... Put some of this storage stuff in here. Uh, no, this is storage. 
I want to build a slightly weird looking thing here, so... I guess I'll attach it on the front. Right? And then... Here, here's a... So this is like an extraneous thing. I'm gonna rotate it. Shift it up. And then slide it in there. Okay. So that's sort of like a weird looking thing. Actually, that's upside down now, isn't it? So I wonder if I can rotate this 180 degrees. Okay, now I need to put it that way. This is just an idea I have. Like, because the default thing has too little room. Am I going to try and speed break the speed record again? Uh, I don't know. I, I got up to like 1350. I don't know what the current speed record, so-called record is. What I do know is that the people that claim to have broken the speed record generally hadn't broken the speed record. What a beautiful monster. I think this is an idea that I've got here, right? Uh, leg extended. Look, this is cool. And it's got three kilometers per second of delta V. It's got decent visibility. It's got room for multiple kerbals. Look, this has room for... Uh, it isn't... How many does it have room for? It says shift view more, but uh, it doesn't actually tell me how many people fit inside it. I mean, I guess, actually, I could just hit this. Yeah, the stowaway will fit, too. Right? So I could have three people in this. Right? So we're building, like, a little lunar-style lander. That's what's going on here. Now, we need to obviously have a power system. Um, so we'll put in, like, little solar panels like this on the sides. Middle mouse button to focus on parts. Yes, I remember that. These are things that I was told during the live event and I forgot. I'm just putting these up here to make it kind of look, you know, more stronger. I'm going to put the ladder on the back here as well. Um, extend part. Okay, that needs a little more extending. There we go. I think this will be a good little lander here. If you mean the game playing Kerbal Space Program 2, they had to, yes, they had an update. They have had an update and it is looking better. Uh, I would like to include a couple of lights on this. I'm not sure they work, but we're going to put them on here anyway. And normally I would include landing lights or something, but I think this is fine. Uh, what we also need is some communication, so I'll maybe put like a little uh, dish on here on the side. There we go. So this thing should fold up. Da -da -da -da. Uh, legs should extend. And we need to get a way to get this out of the cabin. Is that a new wall behind me? No, that's a curtain. Are the are the lights working? Because they weren't working in, during the previous build. Maybe I shall test the lights before I put them on there. Like I was descending into the dark place. Garth Marenghi's dark place. And there was nothing for me to see. <laughs> it's so hard to get this right. There we go. So we get some solar panels and I'll need some batteries in there as well. 2.8 kilometers per second. This has so much performance. Well, that's good. It's nice to have something rather than nothing. I'm just honestly, I've got so much delta V. I'm trying to think of parts that I can bolt onto this that will make it seem sort of semi-useful. You know what I'm actually going to do is this. 
Actually, I'm going to rotate these 180 degrees. And then rotate these 180 degrees. That's good. This now looks a little more like a lander. And... Yeah. You have your... Wait, yeah, ice price. So you, you, you talk about your written test for... Uh, for pot private pilot? Because, you know, good on you. Got to remember, I get a, I get a hundred, and I did it using a, an eighty-year-old, you know, calculator, <laughs> an eighty-year-old computer. So the only thing about this is, how does it get out of the, the thing? So I'm going to switch this back to this being the launch assembly. Now, launch that in there. Good. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, good to know. Is the ladder long enough? It's going to be long enough. If you can't fly a plane from KSP1 and KSP2, I can go... It can go stuff it. Yeah, you're going to have to rebuild your planes. Yeah, let me show you my uh, flight computer. I don't know if you've seen this video. Uh, <laughs> here we go. So this is a, a pilot's flight computer, which was made in 1942. And of course, back then, when they said computer, really it was a fancy calculator. It was a slide rule. Uh, you know, this is obviously very hard to see down in the bottom corner here. Uh, but, yeah, if you, uh, if I, maybe I can zoom this up a little. So I use this to pass a 21st century aviation exam. You have your wind deflection on the back and it has a the order. The requisition number is 42. So it was, it was 1942. Still works. Still totally valid. Because you know what? Math doesn't change. Hope you like that. Yeah, E6B and I, I get 100 in my test. And... Uh, but two and a half weeks, if everything works out, it'll be doing the practical test. The check ride, that's right. Okay, so I think I think that'll work. I mean, it's a bit big, but what does KSP2 bring? It brings more. I mean, what do you care? Seriously. Um, any tips? Make sure you match your bolt size. <laughs> Okay, I, I think this is good enough. You know what I might do is... I'm just wondering if there's something else I should put in this bay here, just for, like, giggles. You know, one thing I could actually do... Here's here's the thing, right? If I pick this off... Oh, interesting that this now goes by the bottom. Maybe I could attach it sideways. So that it pops outwards. Oh, yeah, I should probably collapse the ladder... Oh, crap. Come, go away. Come away. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh, you know what? I'll fix the... Hold on. If I switch this to the launch assembly, and I right-click this... Utility. Uh, nope. Where... Why is the ladder launch assembly this... See, I think we're starting to get some bugs here. Because I can't see that. Well, maybe I'll just hit revert and see where it goes. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that in there before I break things further, right? Let's close that cargo bay. Ground. Uh, Walru. Nope, that's not it. Utility, uh... Here we go. Kellis. Extended. Thank you. Oh, God. Okay, so we've, we've changed this here. Now, we need to get this whole thing on a launch vehicle of some sort. So I need a large thing here. Remember, this stage has to send the whole stack to the moon.
I think if I do... Yeah, that's the largest one that I've got. What can I... I'll, I'll just do this. I bet you right, this whole thing will work just fine. Probably doesn't have enough delta V for that first stage. Yeah. So yeah, you know what I'm going to do here? You know, you got, there is a bit of relearning going on here, right? Because things that I would normally do are not the same as I would do them this time. This is what I'm going to do. And then we'll put the big boosty stage on here. Okay, what does this do in terms of thrust to weight? 1.76... Um, let's extend this stage just a bit. 1.274. Yeah, this is a bit bigger and taller than I'd like, but let's give this a go. Save. Save. Okay. And we'll probably need some launch clamps because this is getting pretty big. Of course, it's entirely possible that this thing just falls apart. And then the whole thing, uh, I would like to move down closer to the ground. And make sure we have Kerbals in it. So we need Valentina, Jeb, and Bob. There we go. That's great. And then we can move a couple off them to that thing. This should work. This should totally wobble to death. I will not be surprised... No, no SRBs. No, we're just going to fly this thing straight. Now, the only thing I'm going to do is time accelerate to the morning. Because I want to launch in daylight. There we go. Apparently, we're missing Jebediah. Um, I don't know where you are, but you need to be in there. We will sort it out as long as we get to space. I will have to... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, these things need a, an action group. We'll be fine. Okay, throttle to 100%. Let's uh, actually... Yeah, Horizon's probably good. Auto grind. Okay, here we go. Let's actually put these all on the same stage. Okay, we got to do the countdown! Oh yeah, look at that. I like the slow lift off. I like it. Yeah, Jeb is not in the one that will let him escape. Okay, now let's start a slow turn here. And you know what they say, there's something about, like, checking staging. Uh-oh, we definitely have some desire to not fly in the right direction. It definitely is wobbling a lot. But that's fine, because the real thing would do that. You know, the real... Flight computer? Here we go. We're losing it. We're losing it. Okay. Oh, wait. We got rid of our escape tower. That's great. There we go. That'll be fine. Look, we got rid of the escape tower. That was exactly what we needed to do. We should probably ditch this as well. Okay, apparently this is still not leaving us. I hope we can get rid of that, because otherwise landing on the moon is going to be kind of hard. Now, I'm going to have to take control, because our we're very low to the horizon here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh.
Okay, we gotta point upwards here. I mean, there's one thing for doing the math, and then there's the other where you're like, yeah, this is not working. Okay, at least we have enough delta V to go upwards. Okay. Look, we're sort of going supersonic through the atmosphere sideways. This is totally gonna work. You guys came here thinking I would be good at this, right? Sometimes you gotta be bad to be good. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see if our... Yeah, look, our our time... Oh, oh, okay, now we're into this stage. Okay, now we need a little more angle on this. Well, look, we might be able to make it to orbit. I'm amazed that we don't have control here. What? Should the devs create an area? There, there's ancient aliens in, uh, in KSP2. I don't think we should necessarily have an Area 51. I think what we do need is something like Groom Lake and Edwards, you know, where we have a nice flat area with awesome runways to do testing. Yeah, let's see how far we can get. Oh, Justin Elliott, you bought a Chernobyl liquidator <laughs> medal? Boy, might be the coolest thing you own, or it might be one of the hottest. Have you tried putting it up to a, you know, a Geiger counter just to see? This thing still has plenty of Delta V. Yeah, so, like, uh, obviously we're having issues with aerodynamics. That's our problem. But, look, half the fun is now solving... I, I think I have enough... Here, I think I have enough thrust to wait to get orbit words. There, look, my, uh, my thing is increasing. Therefore, I am going to get to orbit. I think it would be cool if Sol was a solar system you could travel to in, in the Kerbal Space Program, too. What's a few alpha particles between friends, right? I mean, the Kerbal Liquidator menu uh, medal shows like alpha, beta, gamma, and a drop of blood. It's kind of a neat little design. There should be a non-Stargate in Antarctica. Uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely need more airports. I, I want that. I would definitely like to have... The dessert remote re replaced returned. Oh, shoot, that's what's going on. There we go. We're getting places. So look, if I get to orbit, I wonder how far I can I can take it, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking there will still be bugs and we'll have to start fixing them. Plug Runway Project. Hey! So Conchadroid is mentioning something called Runway Project, which you might have heard of. It's this incredibly fun competition in the original Kerbal Space Program where you build fighter jets and fly them against each other. And right now we're designing pod racers for the Bunta Classic. And Conchadroid is involved and it can totally plug it... Uh, makes it happen. Conchadroid is the person. Uh, it has been raining here. Yes, it has. Okay. I think I'm actually going to raise that orbit just a little more. We'll see how... So, look, I've got... Ah, I get some performance left in this stage. Yeah, we get jiggly engines. I like it when my engines jiggle. Oh wait, Jebediah Kerman is in the correct seat now. I've no idea what happened there. I'm headed somewhere. I've got a lander, so I think I'll be able to land somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Um, 
no word on the timeline for porting to other things. Basically, they're going to have to fix the PC version first before they consider doing a port to a console. And it's not clear if a Steam Deck is going to be properly supported anytime soon. Oh my god, there's so many people saying hi, hello. This is just being relaxing, chilling, and by the way, there is a significant lag, so... You think Lander blew up in its bay? Well, we can find out. Lander is there! The Lander is totally there. We had some issues with staging, but it looks like it's in good shape. Maybe I'm going to close this bay. Uh, for simple reason that we need to perform a burn to get into orbit and we don't want to lose it. You wonder how- my engines feel very tired. Bingo bango, yeah, look, uh, I can attest to that. Playing Kerbal Space Program on console is not great if you're the kind of person that pulls out your hair. Okay, so we're in orbit. Now, I think we should definitely try to go moon words. I just don't know how much Delta V I have. What I should try to do is get rid of this here. Okay, this is not decoupling. So that could be problematic. This is supposed to be a separatron, right? Not a... Uh, this is a... Yeah, TS. Well, then a TD. So I don't know how we're going to get rid of it. There's bugs. Uh, looks like we've encountered another bug. There we go. Let's pop our panels out. So the question is, do I go to curb... I think I'm going to take this to Minmus for the simple reason that I don't know if we can maneuver this lander once we get to the target. Click on the docking port. You think I can undock the docking port? Um, Clampotron. Yeah, there's no undock capability. Is the notification timing fixed? I don't know. Can you express? Oh, thank you. There's so much chat. Thank you, Zana. Okay, so let's let's try going to the moon. I think I've got a way to do this. Set target. Uh, if, if I have to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of the Kerbals in each of the spacecraft. And they will fly independently. I'm sure I have enough Delta V for that. Oh, yeah, I shall hit F. Five. We'll be fine. What I want to do is make sure that we get to the moon. By the way, this delta V is wrong because it's probably not including the mass of this part here. What I do need to do is figure out where the best place to make this burn is. And that's typically about here. Create a maneuver plan. Okay, see, that's us getting an encounter. So that is that is when we're going to make that burn. And here's the thing. Because this uh, lander is inside the bay, we can't use time acceleration. If I use time acceleration, what will happen is it will become physicsless and it will just it'll phase through it. So I have to, like, uh, I don't know how to do this, actually. <laughs> Because if I hit time accelerate, it's going to take a while. 13 minutes. I'm hoping it doesn't explode. What's a Drez? It's a... Oh, no, I knew that would happen. I knew it. Okay. No. Okay, I, I'm going to reload that. Sacrifice Jeb to the vacuum of space. <laughs> I was really hoping that I would be able to save this mission. It's even more smashed up than it was.
Okay, so one last thing I can try is we can just try to turn on unbreakable stuff and see what happens. <laughs> no! What? I'm so disappointed because I thought that I might be able to save this. I'm drinking Guinness. I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, this thing is missing a leg and an engine. If it could have the engine still attached, it would be worth it. Okay, look, we have to go to a place. If I could just get it to spawn inside the bay and not explode, that would be great. But I think there's a problem with the precision of the orbit. I love how this just falls back to Earth. Corbin, I mean. Right. Well, look, let's check the settings. Settings. See, they're on. It's not actually. They were on. Uh, 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 uh. So, I'm wondering uh, if there's a way that I can load a game paused. Oh, wait, look, we have this save from um, er earlier. Right, let's do this. Right, let's, let's do this. Okay, let, let's take a look inside this. Uh, cargo bay open. S still in there, still floating around, right? That's fine. So let's figure out, there's the moon there. There's the moon there. So like, we're gonna have to just do this slow style. There's, there's no way about this. Or, once I get it into orbit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Jeb over and he will fly it to the moon. Valentina and Bob will fly in the main thing. They will rendezvous in lunar orbit, land on the moon, come back and then come home. We'll be able to do this. We have enough Delta V in this lander to do this. We're totally going to do this. Uh, I just want to check here. Sacrifice Jeb to the vacuum of space. I'm doing this. So, uh, JPJ Thunder, I don't know what your question was. What I do know is... It, burn to the moon in the light. Yeah, I know the moon has plenty, but, but it needs to be able to come back. I can't, I can't time warp because as soon as you time warp, physics stops working. And the spacecraft will merge through each other and explode. And there's no physics time warp in KSP2. This is just something that's just weird. I'm gonna raise my perigee. Thank you very much, David Link. Uh, I am remembering. This is what I'm counting down to. I mean, yeah, let's just bring this up. We'll get into orbit. Uh, I mean, look, here's the thing. I either wait 15 minutes till we reach our ideal burn location or I fly them separately. Ah. Yeah, you've mentioned this. Uh, not a Time Lord 21. You, you've had an issue with decoupling... I think some of those bugs were fixed, but I can't guarantee that, um, yeah, I can't start time warp with an engine on, because if the engine's on, then it'll, yeah. <laughs> no, one, we're not gonna, we only need to make this burn, right? Game is not a dumpster fire, that is not, a, not true, it is much, it's slightly better than a dumpster fire. I know what a dumpster fire is. Oh, no, nice. Now these panels are blocked. Well, that's great. That's going to be a problem. Uh, 
I need to make a... I need to get around to here, right? I need to get around to here so I can make a burn. We're much closer, right, than we were. Ten hour meditation to lo-fi space sounds. Oh. I can't... I don't think I can attach it to the top of the rocket. Just sometimes broken things you have... Here's the thing, if something is broken in Kerbal Space Program, I'd much rather figure out how to fix it, despite the bugs, than just complain, right? This mission is salvageable. I am totally going to bring this crew and land them on the moon. I, I swear to you now, we're going to get a landing on a moon with this. It flipped out of control, doesn't matter, we're going to fix that. Things weren't staged correctly, we're going to handle that. Right? I promise you, I swear to you, that Jeb and Val will get to the surface. Bob is going to stay in space. Because, Bob. I mean, come on. Like, Bob is the expert at the ocean stuff, right? You know, he gets in the water, what does he do? He's like, I'm Bob. Right? Bob's around. Okay. There we go. F5 that. So. So, 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 so. There, there's the moon. Oh, wait. It's slightly further than I thought. Okay. Well, it is maybe 12 minutes. The al alternate thing I could do... It's more fun to salvage a mission than to... Yeah, pretty much. So if all the options you would say failure is one of them, failure is absolutely an option. But not for me. Just do it in two parts. Uh, but I want to get as much Delta V from this uh, rocket as possible. <laughs> There's a kind of... There is a certain joy to be had in, uh, you know, Kerpolo 13. And apparently I can't extend the panels, so I hope the power is okay. Yeah. That decoupling still... Oh! Look, wait, wait! Is that actually decoupling now? Nope, it's still not. I thought it decoupled. It made a sound. Tur okay, I'll turn on indestructible. Right, uh, resume game. And I'll F5 it now. <laughs> but not for me. Okay. Uh, the other thing I could do is I could put it into the target orbit and then I could do the phasing later. I don't think the, the lander can't be redocked, so we're going to have to do an EVA transfer. That's what I'm going to do, right? We're just going to... I'm just going to eject myself and then we're going to make a transfer... Mm, 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 mm. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just wait. NASA. <laughs> There's the moon. If we could, if we were only going the opposite direction. Uh, there's a lot of broken stuff with ground vehicles. There, there still is the cargo bay open close aero bug from KSB. There's a lot of interesting cross-pollination between uh, bugs, for sure. I I'm going to say Kerbal Space Program 1 $7 Early Access had a lot less content than KSP2 Early Access. Let's be clear on that. Can you dock? I can't dock the lander to the top of the rocket because this thing is getting in the way. So what I want to do is I make sure I want to use as much of this propellant as possible. And then, I want to separate them. Which means I really need to wait for this thing to come around to the right part of its orbit. Uh, you're in Manaus, capital of the Amazon. Thank you! My, my wife went to Brazil just before we got married and I've always meant to go back. Oh, you know, okay, I've got a plan, I think. Yeah, I've got a plan. Do, 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 do. 
What I'm going to do is wait until it gets around here and then I'm going to make my burn. And the reason is that should put us pretty close to the exact phasing time. How is space today? Space is very spacey. It's not, it's not that full of stuff because it's space. Uh, I don't know if I can load a save game without having an unscheduled disassembly. But I can take a look inside this. Look, we have the entire crew here visible. So, you know this, right? If you... Okay, apparently that doesn't work. There we go. Apparently that doesn't work either now. Okay, that's good. It's not clear if you will, are able to build colonies that fly around. I think the way they're designed is that they won't go anywhere. Would I ever go to space? I, If I have the option to go to space, I will almost certainly go to space. But highly unlikely that someone will give me the option to go to space. I did apply to be an astronaut and for a whole year or so they didn't say no. If you, if I switch to the, the the if I switch to the tracking station, both things would follow independent orbits. I need the I need the lander to be inside the cargo bay so that when I fire the engine, it gets accelerated. Right, that's the important part of this. And this is where I really could use time acceleration. I mean, so Jacob Werzer, I totally went to the moon, like, in one take without any bugs, but I made a very simple rocket. I didn't do a fancy thing, I just did, like, a basic rocket rather than... This is why I've advanced to the more multi-stage, multi-object monstrosities, because that's more likely to expose the bugs. And we are, of course, enjoying the hilarity as things have gone wrong in this case. That's okay. I'm just enjoying myself. I had, I've had i had such a good time. Uh, but I'm going to say, you know, if you want, it, it, you want to see something cool, like while we're waiting, I could bring up something. Uh, I'm sure I've got it somewhere. <laughs> uh, i got to dig this out somewhere. You're booming, 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 booming. What's my thought on new graphics and AI? I think that actually it has a lot. I'm I'm really glad that they tried to maintain the Kerbal vibe. They could have changed a lot of things, but they've really made a point of making the aesthetics of the vehicles very much in line with the, the Kerbal universe. Uh, and I think that in part is because they've got Chris Adderley, like, who's involved, who's, he built restock. He knew the sort of, he had a great idea about the correct aesthetics, the things to go for. Oh, 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 oh. Where is my, I'm just looking for this thing here. This is very unfortunate that I can't fight here as video. I have too many files floating around here. Okay. One, thirty-eight. Unfortunately, all these files have ridiculous names. Aha, here we go. 
This is us just waiting very slowly while I'm looking for things. Um, I, I like... I really like North Star, but clearly I can't afford North Star. Oh. Here we go. Um, next one. Four. <laughs> so, um... As I mentioned, I've, I've started really doing my solo flying, so we can I can share something while we're waiting, right? This is, uh, this is me actually landing this plane, like, totally solo, no instructor or anything. Um, just from, from my point of view, right? This is a SR-20 landing at Nosfield, California. I think I landed it a little flat. My instructor would be like, oh, you landed it flat. Ugh, you gotta pull harder. I survived. I survived my first voyage on my own, Neil. Beyond the field. Uh, yeah, a lot of lot of fun has been had. Here we go. Let's take off while we're waiting. Look, realistic graphics here. That's right. It's the best and highest quality graphics that we have in this. Things can only get better, that's right. Yeah, look Matt, no instructor, that's right. By the time I make this lap in the pattern, I should totally uh, have sorted, have sorted it out, right? We should be totally ready to make our burn. <laughs> look at the frame rate on this! Look at the frame rate! How, how many landings do I have? Um, I've, I've hundred, over 100 landings, about 80 hours, and I've only ever flown an SR-20, which means that basically day one of uh, solo flight I got a high performance aircraft endorsement, which most people don't get until later. Uh, also, you know, technically advanced aircraft, that's right. Runway 13, that's right. I can get to the moon without a maneuver plan, sure. Look at the fabric, look at the leather, look at the simulation on that leather there. The, the camera attaches to the side of my uh, headset like this. Um, yeah, like this. So, sometimes depending upon the field of view, you'll catch my eyebrows, and boy, those are impressive eyebrows when you see them up close. By the way, note the flight simulator running inside the cockpit, synthetic vision. Uh, well, if you pull out the keys, the ignition turns off and you're not generating power, so don't turn off the ignition. It hasn't been 15 minutes just yet. We're fine. This game... <laughs> this game costs about $350 per hour. And I'm not kidding. I hope I'm not streaming on Twitch too, because I'm not supposed to be. Yeah, this is an SR-20, so it's less power, but very similar. This was Saturday. I flew on Saturday. Here we go! Look at that centerline positioning!
I do have a Twitch account, but I'm not streaming on... I'm not supposed to be streaming on Twitch right now. It's a fl Yeah, it's a renting it through a, a school. Uh, whatever. Flying club, school, whatever. So that, that wasn't my first solo. That was just the first one I happened to record. Yeah. Yeah, it's not related to the SR-71. Okay, I think we must be getting pretty close. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I think if we do it there... Yeah, there we go. So, 59 seconds. Did I even set that as my target? Set that as my target. So I'm just going to mostly guesstimate this, right? going to burn prograde and just hope that I get roughly in the right place. Because I'm going to have to make a lot of changes afterwards. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, time to fire up that engine. There we go. Oh, cancel. Maybe I'll keep the throttle down a bit. Like, we still, as long as that thing doesn't fall out when we're not looking. We'll be fine. What's probably going to happen is we end up with... Uh, is we're going to run out of propellant. And then we're going to have to get Jeb in the back of the thing and fly that. But maybe not. Maybe we actually get on a trajectory to encounter the moon. We're pretty close here. Oh man, look at that. It ran out and it's on a crash course with the moon. Perfect. Why do I need a maneuver plan? It's not like I'm going to think. So not only do we get the thing on course, but we also dispose of the stage. Yeah, that is, that is, that is like perfect. Okay, so now, uh, let's wait for sunrise. Okay. There we go. So now, Jab, you'll be the one to get out. That's... I don't need a rescue. I am the rescue. So we can walk across the hull. Uh-oh. Well, I guess we're going to need our, our thrusters. This is always my favorite kind of mission, where I have to fail and recover and figure out how to save the day. There's the sun coming up. Man, what a view! What a sight! Wait, I hope I have a decoupler here. Did I forget a decoupler? <laughs> There better be a decoupler there. Okay, good. So. 
There we go. So I should be able to do that. Awesome, so now we're leaving this. Now, the other stage, I hope that we have. Apparently, oh no, I apparently forgot the decoupler here. So guess what, guys? Uh, we're all going to have to go to the moon. Because I can't dock on the front here, I don't think. Okay, I forgot to have a decoupler in here, so we're really in trouble. But the good news is, we have enough uh, performance here that we can get you guys safely to the moon. Unfortunately, we can't land you back on Earth, Kerbin. So actually, we've used up all the propellant from that, I think. Yeah, okay, hold on. Well, I guess we're all getting off. I guess you're all joining me in this thing because that thing is headed towards the moon. Okay. I'm gonna need that open. I think I can get in through this. Okay, so we've got room for three of them in here at least. Sorry I kind of screwed up in the design here. We're going to figure this out. You're going to have your trip to the moon and then we're going to have to rescue you. Now technically I could land it back on Kerbin, but we have, you know, no heat shield or anything. This way, at least, you get a trip to the moon in the process. Yeah, I think uh, I just... I forgot to include the... Uh, the... What do you call it? The... The decoupler, which meant that it drained fuel from the upper stage. This should be fine. So, at least this has propellant. And we have 2.7 kilometers per second. And... We're still on course for the moon. So what I'm going to do is point prograde. Fire up the engines. Oh, the engines are activated. Okay. Apparently we're missing now. Status occluded. There we go. Nominal. Okay, now try it. Uh, we don't seem to have any engine power here. Okay, no, we got it. We got it. We're just... Okay, we're still missing, that's fine. We, we don't seem to have our maneuver node for that thing. You know what, let's, let's move forwards in time. Let's F5 and let's actually travel towards the moon. Worst that happens is I just have to suicide burn into the surface, right?
2700 Delta V is more than enough for this. Yeah, I don't have the thing. You know, if I hit F5 and then F9, let's see what happens. Maybe that'll recompute the, the target orbit. Yeah, we don't have... Uh, we don't have this here. Hopefully I will still hit the sphere of influence of the moon. Okay, so we don't know... So the peri periapse is 1000. Great, that's fine. It's going to hit. It's not a problem. Okay, retrograde. <laughs> My first ever moon mission written KSP-1 needed a rescue and then a rescue mission for the rescue mission, but they all came home eventually. Yes, that is how we do it. This is the way. And so say we all. Okay, so I don't have an orbit displayed for this and I have no idea why. So I'm just going to have to eyeball it. Read the numbers. Feel the numbers. We're going down on the dark side. But that's fine as long as uh, we get slow enough. So now the perigee should start, or the peri moon, periceline, perilune. It should uh, it should decrease, and once it gets low enough, I'll stop it because we'll actually need to perform our descent on the other side. So, there's the moon there. Of course, did I actually check? Now, the other thing already crashed into the moon. At least we, you know, there's some drama there. It's like, oh my god, you guys, you're stuck in a spacecraft that's headed for the moon. Go to the tracking station, it will say you're landed. But it's, it's probably true. Let's pop the gear. Let's do this now. 1 minute 35. A gear comes out. That's good. No. Nope. There we go. We could turn the lights on as well. Hey! Now it looks like the lights work. That looks so much more atmospheric. I bet you what'll happen is they'll fall through the sand, the the surface. I hope I have enough thrust to land on the moon. There we go. I'm sure this will work just fine. Ben! Okay, wait a second. Who's this? Yes. Ben Child... By the way, thank you for the super chat, Elzar760. Really appreciate it. Ben Childs, thank you for the donation. Really appreciate the love you guys are sharing for this utter ineptitude that is being is going on here. I think this is actually a good point. We might go to the tra tracking station and see what happens. Maybe we can salvage this. What does it say? Uh, default name. Okay, flight situation. Landed. Lol. That's a problem. Landed with that velocity. I'm hoping... Uh, I haven't tried Terra Invicta yet. No. Okay. I haven't had very much time to do anything. 
I'm worried that if I try to land, what'll happen is the I'll fall through the surface because I've seen that happen as well. I think a number of bugs got fixed. Just scream ineptitude again. But, but, oh! Oh, the ineptitude of the whole thing! Bravo! <laughs> Wait, uh, I'm just trying to make this happen. You found... T uh, you know, there's so many games that I'd like to play that, you know, just... Continually lacking time. Okay, I think I need to start figuring out about landing here. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that is not good at all. But you know what I need to do, actually? Let's extend the solar panels. Okay, hold on. Let's let's maneuver over to that area there. Making a, a little bit of a deflection so we can land on a flatter surface. Well, now we should see where we're pointed. That is more like it. Much better. Well, at least I don't have to worry about running out of Delta V. I seem to have plenty of that. I wish I had first person view. That's something I sort of miss. Okay. Don't forget the space weed. Does anyone think it's a coincidence that uh, people are talking about Starship going getting high on 420? Beware. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to end up with a... A descent into the moon. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say, like, the interiors are great, but... Oh, you know, oh shoot, wait a second. Ground altitude! <laughs> I was like, that ground looks way closer than it should be. <laughs> That's the old not setting your, ult not making your altimeter setting. <laughs> like, oh, the runway is 100 foot low higher than I thought it was. Safe landing, and we get 1.5 kilometers per second left. You know what? I'm pretty sure I could take this and fly it to Minmus. <laughs> right? I'm pretty sure I could... <laughs> 12.02 alarm. I'm pretty sure I could send it to the other moon with the amount of uh, Delta V that I have. You know, I, I could build a rescue mission... But I think it's worth flying to the other moon first. We have a contact light, yeah. So let's deploy this. Oh. 
Uh oh, uh oh, don't fall over. We sound effects on the moon, that's unrealistic. It's like, I made it to the moon, I made it to the moon, I'm going to dance, that's my dance. <laughs> okay, he is really excited to get beyond the moon. Oh man. Now, yeah, that's the question. Will I actually get my uh, orbits back when I take off? I should... Pr Observer can't leave active vessel, really? Does this mean I can't get all of the Kerbals out at the same time? It's enough to get back to Kerbin, but the problem is I probably can't land like that. And, and I'm fr also afraid that if I, like, try to reload, then this might fall through the surface. So I'm wondering whether I should put it back to the surface. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not splitting them up. Will I make another KSP YouTube series? I will definitely make some series, but I don't know how much uh, <laughs> drama. So l let's actually go. Is there a way that we can manage resort? resort? Kerbal Manager, look. Uh, can we... Location B. Okay. Choose to... Oh, that's how we do that. Look, Bob can get out for a bit. Oh, no, he can't. Wait, what happened? I am extraordinarily worried that what was going to happen is uh, this thing will fall through the surface when it reloads or something. Yeah, but the problem is I can't slow down and land on Kerbin. I don't think I have the thrust to weight ratio to put this thing down safely. So I could totally... Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to orbit for the simple reason that I'm not sure the physics are working correctly. I'm worried that if... I've seen this before. If you save on the surface and the thing glitches, you will basically fall through the surface into the middle and you'll not be rescuable. And I can't have that happen. So we're going for a flight. Good thing that Moon has a, comp uh, a magnetic field. Yeah, there's a docking port on the top. Yeah, we'll build to get... Well, that's great, but here's the thing. Can I get them all out of the spacecraft? Probably not. Right now, I'm not showing any pilot here. Oh. <laughs> Look, I've actually got an orbit now. Actually, this is a good one. If I go, I could go to Minmus from here. Let's just do this. Okay, may not be able to get to Minmus. <laughs> 
I don't. I only have six hundred and fifty-three meters per second. I can get into Minmus orbit, and then they could EVA to the surface if they want. Okay. Scott's forgotten how to make this game look good. I've forgotten how to make it look easy. Let's let's get out of the moon's sphere of influence. Crashing into the surface of the moon is proof that it's not pudding. The proof is in the pudding. Have you heard that? The original versions of Kerbal Space Program were very much uh, Discworld. Okay, so now... There's the ascending node, 4.8 degrees. Okay. Okay, well, why is that not showing? There we go. We get encounters now. 20,000, 20,000 kilometers. That's, like, really far. So what we can do is we can change our phasing once we get up here. So, like, what we do is we create a maneuver plan. And we just basically increase it. And it should pull that second location around closer... And we should basically drop into orbit around Minmus. And we'll probably have enough Delta V to get to the surface, but maybe not back into space. Got 93 meters per second. That is very small. But we know it's possible. Yeah, they they added that after I pointed out that it was a pretty damn basic thing to, that we needed. So, I don't actually need this. So I'm just going to fire prograde. Again, what all we're doing is we're adjusting the phasing here. This is the one we're actually caring about. Yeah, I think I'll save them from the surface of Minmus. I mean, you've got to admit, this mission did not have the greatest start. So the fact that they get to go to both Moon and Minmus in this mission is kind of pretty cool, huh? The, the, the pudding model of the atom in Kerbal Space Program. Are we going to have to rewrite all the nuclear physics engines and stuff in Kerbal to make them work? Like, the laws of physics say that they are nuclear made of pudding with the greatest chocolate sauce ever. There we go. Cool. So we're going to have an encounter. We're going to switch places. And... That's great. So that's Minmus there. We've, we're going to follow around the inside and catch up on it first and second stage flipped over the problem is now nobody can EVA because the UI is broken Where's Minmus? Hold on. Point towards the target so I can see where it is. It. Okay. 
Or wait, is that away from the target there? There it is. There's Minmus. And we've got a glitch on my mouse as well that sometimes makes it stop and start. Yeah, I mean, depending on how fast I approach Minmus, I might be able to land and get back into orbit. It takes about 150 meters per second. Uh, so this is getting very close. There we go. So we're going to fly over the top and then uh, slow down and get into orbit. I should definitely save and reload once we get there. You know, actually, before I go in get into the sphere of influence, I'm going to fix something here. I want to fix my close approach to Minmus. Uh, so... No, slow down. Because that will improve my... It's not showing my closest approach though. Okay, well, apparently we're just going to have to live with that. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to use the maneuver planner for this again because it's not really updating in real time. Let me turn this around and then I'm just going to slow down so that we arrive in the sphere of influence slightly lower down. That will mean that I don't have to spend as much delta V on the landing. Okay, we're settled. That's pretty good. I think we're I think we're off for that. So let's get into the sphere of influence and then do this. Bingo! Falling over the top. Okay. 36 kilometers. That's fine. It's F5. Let's slow this thing down. F5. F9. Maybe I can get somebody back. I need 300 to land, and it's a question of do I get enough to get back into orbit? I mean, look, I what I don't want to do is commit to a landing and then find myself... Um, find, find myself having to get out and push. Never mind. I'm, I don't know why I'm creating a maneuver plan. I just wanted to find a place to warp to. What are these lines here? That is some glitch. Val is back. I know we got... Oh, yeah, yeah. We're definitely starting to see some graphics glitches. Slowly, the universe is breaking down. You'd help me push. Well, you know, this, it was once, uh, I can't remember what happened, but at some point it started getting called the manly maneuver, where you basically get out and push your space capsule. And it's fine if you have lots of time. Less fine if you've got a very heavy thing and not much time to actually do it. Yeah, so 190 meters per second, we should be able to get down. Okay, there we go. So now the question... Oh yeah, I should just go straight into a landing here. 
I'm going straight into a landing because that's a flat area right there. Okay, make sure I'm in ground reference. There we're going. We're going for it. And if I have 150 meters per second of delta V left after this, I should be fine to get back into orbit. Oh, uh, the, I really the person that was in the boring Zoom meetings, the, the guy uh, Herrick Hendrick Herrick Robert Herrick discovered the uh, <laughs> the uh, volcanoes on Mars. They're not in Venus. That's hilarious. The thing is, I mean, we all pretty much knew that there were volcanoes on Venus. It's just nobody could prove it. I've been to the new secret on Minmus, but I don't have the Delta V to get there. Do they have enough snacks? No, they have problems with snacks. <laughs> uh, that's my... my uh, flight instructor is texting me saying, don't worry about the fact that <laughs> the, the plane showed way lower speed than you thought. You'll be fine. Why did the chicken cross the road? I actually made a reference to the boring Zoom meetings because we were having like this planning meeting on the Friday and somehow, like, I can't remember what happened, but it was very clear to me that the person running the meeting wasn't actually paying attention. <laughs> and I was like, oh, don't worry, let me tell you about this new paper about the person that discovered <laughs> I don't know what, what these things are. This It'd be nice right now if uh, I could know what my, del my uh, thrust to weight ratio was. Ah. Uh Talia Malspana, I honestly, I'll, I'll tell you that I basically got an early copy of the game and I went and figured out where they were by hacking the, re the, the game files. Sorry. But, you know, you can find them randomly. Some of them you can see from orbit. This game is so barked, but you know what? This game is so fun. Oh. It yeah, though the she, Valentina uh like if I rotate the vehicle, hold on. I bet you it'll get light. Uh, maybe not. It's dark. Of course Just gotta be sure I don't hit the ground too fast. Look, I mean, you can play if you want to find them randomly. The problem is that Ker the original Kerbal Space Program they did have these things randomly, and later on they added the Cognet system where you could actually find them using like bit setting up like probes to scan things, and KSP two doesn't have that in it yet, so. It's kind of hard to say. Oh, hold on. What's going on here? That was, uh, I guess I was in orbit mode and it decided to transit and I didn't catch that. Well, it's fine. We still have enough Delta V. Uh, 
And there is the sun shining through the landscape. Or the lens flare st shining through the landscape. And there, yes, 275 meters per second means that I can get back into orbit. Should it, so that means the rescue ship doesn't need to be a lander. It can rendezvous with them in orbit. Like, it's almost like I have some innate ability to play this game. Well, at least Val is going to get to walk for a bit. Okay, uh, you know what, let's, tr before I plant a flag, there, look, I'm going to switch back, and let's get them all out on the surface. <laughs> uh, maybe it's planting the flag that broke things. Is she farting? Oh no, no, she's she's scratching her butt. Okay, uh Bob. Now remember bring the keys with you, don't get yourself locked out. We we're a long way from home if we need the AAA to br open our vehicle up. That's right. Yes. Feel fully uh <laughs> fully uh, impressed by the <laughs> Oh, the antics. She's just making <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're in Minmus. That's that's their place. Bob. And I oh, see now. See, this is it. Now that I've planted the flag, now that I've planted the flag, I can't EVA. Uh, so that's the thing. And we have only have access to physics time acceleration here, which is interesting. And now we can switch. Okay. So time acceleration appeared to fix that issue. That is a weird one. Oh. But wait, Jeb now doesn't have a flag. Do you have a flag? <coughs> <coughs> she has a flag. Do they only have one flag per trip? <laughs> What's with, like, all the, the rationing of the flags? So, I can't unfortunately do time acceleration by the looks of things. Yeah, still stuck on observer, can't leave active vessel. Let's jump back in the vessel and see if that if we can sort things. Yes, I know, Eddie Izzard. Izzard, uh, definitely formative influence on my humor. Him and Craig Ferguson, or her and, yeah, I know, it's, I don't, I don't care. Like, awesome individuals, some of the funniest comedy stand-up I have ever heard. So look, we have time acceleration here, but these guys don't. So if I time accelerate, do these guys like fall through the surface? No, they don't. So what I want to do is wait for the sun to come back. All alone in the night.
So they're probably going to come up over there at some point. There we go! Now we can actually appreciate the place where we've landed. It's flat. Watch my fuel, 272, we're fine. Refl pretty reflections. I don't know if there's any light actually on the surface. Anyway. This is Bob. Bob shouldn't have a flag. He doesn't have a flag. We still have these things floating around. What are they? I wonder if they're collidable. Oh, that's interesting. I don't have jets. Interesting. Jetpack status off. Well, that's odd. Uh, I am going to move her into the screw cabin. Oh, does he have a. Oh, he has a flag now! Nope, doesn't work. Okay. Too many flags. Okay, does he have working jets? Nope, he doesn't have working jets. Did the fuel, like, run out at night? I think these are disassociated struts because there were struts on the structure. Look, actually, look, hold on. You see this? This is what's happened. If I if I mouse over. So this is part of the, the thing here. It's always fun to try to look like, here's a couple of the struts just floating out here. Yeah. Glitch. Okay, he is gonna board, and then we're gonna put him down. Uh into the crew cabin. Finally. Okay, and then I'm going to put the whole lot back into orbit. And then it'll be time to send a rescue mission, I think. <sighs> yes, yeah, subliminal vibes quoting Star 69 there. They know what is what, but they don't know what is what. They just strut. What the? Yeah, that's right. Is this? Uh, no, this is not funding a record label, ABB. Thank you for. Yes, the, apparently the financing is now just funding a games label rather than <laughs> rather than someone misspending the money on parties and all that stuff well I guess we're getting back into orbit ah, here we go Oh, so we have to rescue them. You're watching TOS with your wife. Now, what is TOS? Because it's not the original series, unless it's... it might be. So, you know, next week is actually... there's a lot of parties for gaming. Because it's the Games Developer Conference in San Francisco. I previously have gone to this with like, uh, you know, got a, a press pass and gone. But I am so working hard at uh, getting the pilot thing. Um, yeah, yeah, having the Kerbals added mass. 
I, I mean, I guess I could rescue them. I don't know. Was there talk about Soyuz 5? Is it, if it is the original series, that's fine, because we all, you know, think about Star Trek, and we know, like, TOS and TNG, but then there's DS9. I, I like DS9. I kind of like this lander design, I'm going to say. It's much skinnier. It fits in the, uh, it fits in the payload base better than the current lander can options. Chipotle is one of the cheaper places to eat, to be fair. <laughs> Voyager was not the best. Deep Space Nine was the best. I'm sorry. I mean, I love the original series, and I love the next generation. The next generation first series was really rough. Oh boy. It really starts to get good around Season 3. But DS9 just had a lot of cool interlinked stories going all the way through it. Um, and it had Garrick. Like, and come on, like, how, how can you argue with that? It was so good. Every scene he was in was just, you know, chef's kiss. But like, oh. <sighs> yeah. Ah, it's it's also annoying that it pauses at the wrong timing. Tuvok, ah, oh. eh. let's get ourselves into that stable orbit and go for the rescue. Oh, there we go. There, we're fine, and we get. What the heck happened? It shed 176 and then it went back to 67. What what changed there? I swear for a moment it said 176. I don't know. Yeah, you can go back and watch all of Deep Space Nine. Uh, best Fat Boy Slim song is not Praise You. Actually, my favorite Fat Boy Slim tune is uh, Song for Shelter. But that's, you know, because I sort of dig uh, Roland's poetry. Uh, I don't know, like... Let's go back to... Let's F5 this, actually. Resume gate. And then let's go to the vehicle assembly building. We're going to need to have a ship. It's so broken in so many ways. I'm going to say, by the way, uh, I sort of warmed a little to Discovery uh, after I watched it. <laughs> But, I mean, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of Michelle Yeoh, so, like, there is that. As I like to point out, you know, she, uh, she's... There's, there's Tom Cruise talking about doing all his own stunts, and then there's Michelle Yeoh riding a motorcycle for the first time in a movie and jumping on top of a moving train with... No helmet, no wires, <laughs> no special effects, no double, right? <laughs> so what have we got in terms of crew? We'll have Tim C. Kerman, and he's got room for a couple of other people. Let's... Uh... Billy Bobbly. Oh my god, Billy Bobbly. We have to have Billy Bobbly. I like Weapon of Choice and Weapon of Choice I also like because it has Bootsy Collins. And it also makes references to Dune, right? And which I found hilarious when they talked about um like the Emperor is gonna be played by Christopher Walken. And in Weapon of Choice, he's dancing around. The lyrics are like, you know, if you don't walk without rhythm, you won't attract the worm. 
So, <laughs> there's actually a Dune reference in Walken's career already. This is the big... Okay, and this is the Mark 16 XL. So I guess we need some radial mount parachutes. I'm hoping that two of them will be enough. How many parachutes do we need for this test flight? I think I'm going to make a test before I send it all the way out there. We'll just put some uh, you know, boosters on this. Hold on. And we'll remember decouplers this time. That should be fine. Let's just try this. Why aren't the Kerbals in the VAB floor? Because I put down Borax to, you know, deal with them. It's obviously a little unstable. Ah, that's what happened. The decoupler's fired. Oh, well, <laughs> look, we're almost going to land on the vehicle assembly building. Hold on. Let, let's see if we can get... Oh, so this is not the VAB. What is this? They're like, I'm, I'm deflecting so that we'll land on top of the research building. There's the pools. So by doing this deflection, what it does is that wind coming up basically pushes you in that direction. Come on! I don't think I'm getting enough deflection here. Yeah. By the way, I was able to... You saw that I was actually able to land on the roof of that. Not, not even just the roof, but the helipad. Okay, well, apparently we missed. Let's see if we land and not break. That's a pretty hard landing, by the way. That's a 20, 25 mile an hour landing. We really need some uh, landing jets. I, I should show you this, by the way. I have a video. You guys saw the... Um, mm, 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 mm. The landing on the helipad, right? Well, I, I did that in Kerbal Space Program. Somewhere around here. Rocket handbrake. It's in here somewhere. But I've got to, unfortunately, find it and load it. Helipad landing, here we go. Give me one second to play this. So yeah, there's a helipad on the roof here. Uh, this is a little uh, super lightweight plane with uh, little jet engines on the back. Because I was trying to just land on it. That meant I had to adjust the brake uh, strength. It's on the, the Scott Moonley account, just so you know. Here we go. Look, a little bit of stall. And I'm like, flare! Flare! Touchdown at 20. Not, yeah, bang. And then just the brakes just gripped. See that? That is uh, that is fun. Anyway, let's get back to actually trying to build a rescue thing. I think I may have to quit because I've got to do stuff uh, with family and things like that. Uh, revert to vehicle assembly building. Wait. 
Excuse me, Scottish people use miles. I mean, listen, at Glasgow University, <laughs> we have uh, the people that invented not just Kelvin. We have Kelvin and we have um, uh, Rankin. Yeah, Elzar760, I am in 100% agreement with that. Thank you for the donation. Yeah, they should have le ended uh, <laughs> Enterprise with a segue into Quantum Leap. I would have been so down for that. Okay, so we need to get this to Minmus and back. So this will probably be 325, 343. What kind of thrust does that have? 0.326. Let's not do that. Oh, that gives me 37. So if I get this into Kerbin orbit, we will be fine. I just need to make sure we have electrical power and communications and get that into orbit. That's all we need, right? Oh, and I need a way to dock it, right? Yeah, that thrust to weight ratio is for, in, and also is, yeah, so we're fine. Should I even bother with docking? I probably should. Um, Where's my center of mass here? Does this have a... Well, this has RCS thrusters. I think this might just... This will be fine, probably. If it isn't, I'll just have to zoom in and smash into it. Whatever, right? We'll figure that out. Anyway, we've got to put a stage on that. Large. So now if we can just boost this up to get it into orbit, we'll be fine. What is this thrust to weight? 1.087. And this time, let's actually put some aerodynamic fins on it. <laughs> There we go. We'll just put four of those around the bottom, and I'm also going to add some boosters. Uh, laterals. Just to get it through the first few seconds, get it accelerated. Okay, what is it? 1.43 for the first little start of the flight. And we'll put some nose cones on. Uh, oh wait, not those nose cones. And then we need some launch clamps. This will be fine. Just make sure I've got enough Kerbals on board. Not too many Kerbals, that's the real danger. Uh, let's save this as Rescue 1. Yeah, this should get us out there and back. Oh. Do you have a guide on how to get two ships into the same orbit to dock? That is going to be a complicated one. So let's just check. We've got these. These will stage off. Then this. Then this. And then this. And then this. We're totally staged. Let's wait until sunrise, just because sunrise is, looks slightly better. There we go. Okay. Oh, yes. I see a problem with my staging. Ha <laughs> 
Yeah, um, you can't create Kerbal because the star is too small. It requires a certain mass for nuclear fusion. So we're about to run out of fuel here. Uh, yeah, we're still accelerating. That's good. That's a good sign. Um... No, there's, there's docking mode, yeah, you need to use, press R to enable RCS thrusters. We're, we have some pretty high gravitational losses on this, but we're probably going to be fine. Should put bigger boosters on it. Uh, I do not recommend KSP 2 over KSP 1 just yet, no. If you want to get a Kerbal game, you get the original, but you get all the DLC. That's the only thing I would say, is get all the DLC. And then you start modding it. Boy, I'm not sure I have enough uh, performance to get into orbit here. Because this, uh, I, I, I thought I would have enough, but I, I clearly don't. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to fall back because I just don't have the thrust. Oh no, actually, I think we might make it. Okay, we're, we're gonna make it. I thought that sta second stage wouldn't have enough performance, but clearly it does! Clearly it does! It's looking pretty nice, actually. Let's, uh, let's roll it up right. That looks totally high-tech. Oh, bit of a shimmy in there. That happens when you get powerful engines and high gimbal capabilities. Yeah, this is a, actually a really quite a, a beautifully judged ascent in the end. Well, I played it on a 1660 Super and I get 20 frames per second. It was quite playable, but you got to avoid really big rockets. Uh, have I made a space plane? I mean, I made space planes that went to the moon. And I landed on Lathe with a space plane and during the demo day. But, unfortunately, I didn't get a recording of that and I was so disappointed. So now we got to get our way out to Minmus and then rendezvous with these guys. There we go. Now we're in safe orbit. So now we got to figure out how to get here. And unfortunately, I can't target it.
Set target, there we go. Okay, so there is where the orbit is. They're going that way around. So unfortunately, I'm going to be arriving when I'm largely out of plane with respect to it. I will probably need like a plane change maneuver on the way out there. Okay, so we get some sort of approach. Okay, uh, to be. So we're basically bringing, you're just increasing this until they get close. Now, another way I can do this is just by adjusting the time of arrival. But my problem is that because I'm out of plane with this, I would need a plane change to like actually arrive at the right place in the right time. So I'm just doing this instead. I could definitely reduce the, the needs here a little and get closer. Okay, so I'm going to take that and then I'm going to make a, a correction once I'm out there. Because I'm going to actually have to very carefully arrive at the right time. So here we go, point along... Valentina Kerman's favorite Joy Division song, She's Lost Control. You guys see that I have a video about uh, the Joy Division Unknown Pleasures album cover. Right, basically explaining what's going on there. I'm annoyed that the music that does accompanies this countdown does not actually have a tempo that is a whole number of uh, 60. Oh no, this one is a 3070. Then my computer downstairs is a 1660. The one that I just gave to Orion. And it's a 1660 Super. Which is a, you know, significant difference there. And it's also like a, a 10 year old processor. Wait a second. Uh, you know what I'm going to have happen? What is going on here? Okay, something wrong with the maneuver node here. We're just going to point prograde and just let this maneuver happen. Had some weird glitch going on there. Okay, to be that's close enough, right? So now I'm going to create a maneuver plan there, and what we're going to do probably is drop this down. Oh no, we're not doing that. Cancel. Now that we're moving slower, we're going to do that. And hopefully, it'll decrease the distance to target until we actually encounter it. There we go, you see? So we're warping to that and then we'll make that maneuver. So this is just basically we're making a plane change maneuver so that we actually encounter Minmus. 
And frankly, all we don't need to actually follow the maneuver reference. We can just point at the, the actual vector we're going to use. You know, if I focus here, I can actually see where this is going. Should I actually take a look? Okay, so we kind of got this in orbit. And this is probably going prograde, so... Hold on. Which one is the entrance and which one is the exit? We want to make sure that we go in going the correct direction. That's all I'm going to say. So I want to get as close to this maneuver as possible so I can make the change once I get in there. What I'm going to do is use the maneuver plan to actually figure out whether I want to go prograde or retrograde to actually get closer. So actually, yeah, prograde is the direction I want to go. See that? That gets me into a collision course. So I'm just going to go slightly prograde until this happens. So I'm pointed the right way. So I'm actually going to collide, but don't worry, we're going to clean this up once I have an idea of what direct. Well, I now know what direction we're going. So if we run time forwards, sorry. So he's moving that way around, so I just need to fire retrograde really slightly. And this is where I might... I might cheat a little. Or I may not cheat. What I want to do is if, if I have RCS, I might use that. It might not have RCS in a way that works. Yeah, it's not going to work. Okay, so that's us coming in roughly in the same plane, right? So that's the important thing is we're going to insert into roughly the same orbital plane as this target. So now we just need to get here. And unfortunately, I can't click on that, so I guess I need to just... Oh, and we're going to hit the planet Kerbin if we do this. Let's time warp to that point. Let's point at the target. It's, it's there, so we're just going to keep... Yeah, you can turn down the thrust limiter. Is that some, that's a trick you can use? There we go. Now we're in this correct sphere of influence. We need to start planning a rendezvous. So the first thing I'm going to do is at perigee. Well, you know, I'm just going to time warp to there. Time warp to point. And we'll just fire retrograde. Like you could plan it or you can just sort of start working, guessing a way around, right? And now that is my new target, set target. Uh, wait a second. What happened to the orbit? This thing decided to go kind of crazy there. Okay, so looks like uh, we need to make an inclination change, and unfortunately, it's going to be quite a strong one. Okay, so now...
So I'm going to take my inclination out. And we just want to get our, our ascending node down to zero basically, so we're coplanar. It's pretty good. And I'm going to fire retrograde to bring myself down uh, to a much lower, closer orbit to it. And it actually tells us how close we're going to be. 162 kilometers, 162 kilometers, right? I have no idea what's going on there. I want to. I just want to focus on Minmus so I can use that as my reference. So we have 136, 122. There we go, getting closer. So the problem is that they are in a much lower orbit and going much faster, so I want to catch them. Or I should remain out. So at this point, I'm just going to go into a phasing orbit. What is my perigee altitude? 24 kilometers. Yeah, so the problem is we're going to have lower time warp as we get down here. Throttle is what? What? Throttle is. Time warp is not over a minus one. <sighs> oh dear. Okay, 938 meters per second. We're going to have to start worrying about conserving delta V here. There we go. Okay, let's let's come out of map mode for a second. Oh, you know what I should probably do is deploy these solar panels. Morning. Did someone say delta V? They had 921 meters per second off it. Okay, we're gonna be at 48 uh, eight kilometers. So I'm in a lower orbit. I'm basically going to be catching up, right? So every time I complete an orbit, I should get a little bit closer. They changed them, but it's... I, yeah, making them go away can be complicated. So 30 kilometers there. There's a lot of original code, but there's also a lot of rebuilt code. Let's be clear. So getting up here means that they're going to catch up on me. So watch, these say 30. Now, wait, after we pass, now it's 27, but it's actually post-approach, right? So now if we slow the time down and I accelerate my spacecraft forward... This should decrease. That's what I'm thinking, right? Let, let's do this. There you go. Dad, down to six kilometer intercept. Bam. 154 meters. That will do me. I mean, I could have gone in and planned that with maneuver nodes, but frankly, it it um, it gets confusing with all those systems running around and things. You know, you don't exactly know what's what. Okay, 
Let's see. Okay, so now what we want to do is switch into target reference mode and retrograde. So we should we should see where the target is and we will slow down once we get close to them. There we go, two, two kilometers away. <laughs> I do have enough to refill that spacecraft and get to Minmus. I just want to get nice and close to the target. Now one thing I could do, this is where I could start firing up the RCS system. Um, that may not be working. Okay. So I can use RCS to adjust my approach to keep it on course. There we go. This is where I have to be careful not to hit the target. Here we're like a hundred meters out. Time to start firing and deceleration down to three meters per second. Actually, you know what I should do is... Okay, that's not going to work. Let's slow down. Okay. So apparently I can't target the other vessel. from here, so I'm having to... Uh. Set as target, there we go. Okay, stability control, target. Windows kind of annoying. And I can't move it now. Great. Okay. So now point towards the target. target. Just docking here.
Oh no! Apparently it we got the how about some practice? Because apparently docking two spacecraft in Minmus orbit is a rookie mistake that means that Paige should show up until you screwed up, right? Well, uh, it's time to start transferring the Kerbals around. So, we have Bob come over, Jeb comes over, Val comes over. And we've lost the icons for these guys, so let's put Bob and Val and Jeb. Now they've inv disappeared completely. I have no idea what's going on there. There it is. Let's get rid of this thing. Okay, so now we just got to head home, right? And that means we shall make sure that this is oriented correctly when before we decouple it. There we go. Cool. Okay, we're doing fine. So now prograde. Put some distance between me and them. So we're going to wait until we come around. Let me just see. If we do it here, we're going to do it on daytime side. But I guess that's the only option. Okay, we're going to descend at night. Oh, actually, if, if the way we are right now, yeah, we should just go prograde and escape. Oh, wait, apparently I, did, I screwed that up. Am I viewing this from the wrong side? I mean, that sure looks like a retrograde burn to me. Yeah, okay, well, uh, I guess we're going out to here. Yeah, we're just going... Whoa! Are you going to pause at some point? Where are you going to put me? What is, or what is going on here? What are you smoking? That's that's night time now. Yeah, whatever. We're gonna get that retrograde burn. Bring it home. Rescue our team. We did it. We did the most improbable mission ever. What happened to my velocity there? It got confused. Okay, we get an encounter with the moon. We'll deal with that. There we go, 28 kilometers. We should be fine! Again, I haven't done a lot of this stuff in a while, but look, we, we did there. I should have refueled that spacecraft when I was there, shouldn't I? There we go, falling back down. Okay, so...
There we go. I hope these parachutes aren't going to deploy on me early. Did I set target? I may have. I don't know. At this point, we're just going home. And hopefully we get enough deceleration from this so that we can survive. Close the solar panels, we're killing it, we're destroying this thing. We don't need no solar panels, we're gonna burn them all off on the way down. We could definitely tell some story. Save it! Save the game! Yeah, we got our parachutes out. Well, I had a heat shield on that, so... You know, I, I wasn't cheating. I was anticipating that we might actually have to deal with, uh, you know, that kind of thing. There's the moon setting. Remember that time we all went to the moon? Well, except for you guys that came to rescue us, you only got to stay in orbit. But we really appreciate all you've done for us. Because you know what? We were running out of snacks. Hey, Sadpan, thanks very much. Did this patch bring any... Oh, it, it, there's small performance improvements. Uh-oh, we're on the hill. Yeah, look, we survived. We did it. We did it. We got him home. No re-entry heating. No, we no re-entry heating at this point. I don't know, I think I'm going to call that a victory. I think Kerbal's favorite snacks are... Krispy Kreme donuts. Anyway, listen, guys. This was just being a night where I was sort of mucking around, messing around. Hope you enjoyed hanging out, watching stuff. Uh, I'm going to continue making more science videos and we will get some Kerbal and who knows what else. But thank you very much for the time that you spent with me. Um, I'm, of course, Scott Manley. Fly safe.